good evening everyone today my topic of presentation is different types of tonometry i have done it under the guidance of dr maneshwari ma'am so measurement of iop can be through direct method that is manometry which is of experimental use only but indirectly we can use it through tonometers which includes indentation and applination tonometers the digital tonometry is important in eyes with keratoprosthesis ideal tonometer should be accurate convenient and repeatable the indentation tonometer has the shape of deformation as truncated cone while in applination it is simple flat plane indentation tonometer includes short tonometry which is inexpensive portable simple to use but due to multiple errors it is not in much use now applination tonometry is basically based upon imbert fick law which is modified considering the surface tension and the force to bend the cornea it includes contact and non contact based tonometers contact based includes fixed force and fixed area fixed force includes a maclaco calfa tonometer which is currently not much popular the fixed area includes the gold standard that is goldman applination tonometer so the end point of goldman is considered when inner margins of two equal semicircles just touch each other so the sources of error possible in this are due to variation in fluorescence concentration due to central corneal thickness variation corneal astigmatism and corneal curvature it is most accurate it is uh, it requires minimal force on cornea and does not get affected by scleral rigidity but needs lit lamp anesthesia fluorescence staining and it is a contact based procedure so has a risk of cross infection uh, other handheld tonometers include perkins dragers and macmal the perkin tonometer uses the same biprism as in goldman it is easy to carry and can be used in any position dragers is similar to perkin and in macmal includes mainly the tonopen tonometer it applies the cornea with a plunger the tonopen tonometer is portable useful as a screening tool and used over bandage contact lens edematous scarred and irregular corneas while in disadvantages it it is it has poor reproducibility anesthesia is required more tonometers cornea is applied with air pressure as the sensor the advantages include uh, it is useful as a screening tool it can be used in scarred and irregular corneas but again anesthesia is required and the iop values are inaccurate the non contact types include air puff tonometer uh, which applies the which flattens the central part of the cornea by jet of air it is good for mass screening and does not have any risk of cross infection but it is non portable and expensive while pulsar tonometer is portable and can be used in any position the newer tonometers include pascal's dynamic contour tonometer which is based upon principle of contour matching it does not indents or applies the cornea and has but lacks portability and has more learning curve The Richards ocular response analyzer is non-contact type of application tonometer. It not only measures the intraocular pressure but also the corneal hysteresis, corneal compensated IOP, and corneal resistance factor. It is based upon uh, recording of two IOP values during application and recovery of cornea. The eye care uh, tonometer is based upon deceleration of the probe after impact with cornea, which is correlated to the IOP. It does not require anesthesia. Can be used in children. and the acid tips are disposable can be used in situations of high risk infections it but it tends to overestimate iop as compared to goldman the non corneal transpalpable tonometer is include dieton trans tonometer which is based upon uh, acceleration of a freely falling ball as it interacts against the eyelid it is a handheld tonometer and used use especially in children and in corneal pathologies and surgeries but it has false iop readings due to scleral rigidity thickness of the eyelids and orbicularis tone the provio pressure phosphine tonometer is based upon entropic phenomenon of pressure phosphines it is used when conventional tonometry is not possible the ocuton as tonometer is based upon application similar to goldman it is handheld self tonometer and requires anesthesia the sensimet trigger fish contact lens sensor is used for 24 iop monitoring it uh, the principle is based upon small changes in ocular circumference which are correlated to the changes in the iop the implantable iop sensors include which are used for 24 hour iop monitoring include intraocular lens implants and fast pana iop sensors the lens implants are placed into the haptics of the eye the corbis ast is based upon uh, the principle of dynamic deformation of cornea by the jet uh, of air and uh, it is non contact based and as well as it, it gives idea about biomechanical properties of the cornea but it is expensive table mounted and needs a trained staff so overall we can summarize in irregular and over corneas we can prefer pneumatic tonometer and tonopen as well as pneumatic and tonopen can be preferred in uh, eyes with soft contact lenses and in eyes with intraocular gases while in post classic cases dct is preferred 
in children any screening programs for kids non contact and eye care can be preferred while in eyes with keratoprosthesis digital iop assessment is the only applicable method thank you dr agansha uh, which all of these uh, do you have personal experience with uh, yes sir i have uh, i have performed goldman and uh, eye care Mm. And uh, shorts and non-contact only. Okay. Uh, so, uh, tell me a few uh, uh, disadvantages of uh, non-contact optometry. So, non-contact optometry. Uh, first of all, the accuracy is not as compared uh, as comparable to the uh, Goldman ablation. Um, as well as uh, it can, it is affected by the central uh, corneal factors uh, corneal central corneal thickness and corneal curvature hmm. so is it is it uh, doesn't uh, is it really safe and like uh, uh, does uh, is there any possibility that it can uh, uh, transfer in, uh, infection uh, from one patient to the other so the non contact telemetry as it don't have any contact with the cornea the chances of infection directly are less are not possible uh, and, and not really like uh, the, the air puff can actually uh, also and another, another disadvantage is that uh, that the jerk that the patient feels it's not not a very uh, comfortable feeling when uh, uh, this is done uh, otherwise like uh, you have you've done a, a comprehensive uh, uh, presentation uh, Yes, thank sir. you thank you sir. dr vinit yeah so yeah. Uh, uh, good presentation you've uh, done a good uh, uh, overall coverage of uh, this uh, there is uh, what is the role of cct uh, uh, central corneal thickness and applination uh, do you know an approximate value the, it's not something which you regularly would want to validate your pressures with but if you have say someone with a 600 uh, corneal thickness uh, what does the application approximately what average corneal thickness is in uh, application generally uh, the formula takes care for till what corneal thickness uh, so we can uh, if the corneal thickness is extremely more or less we can convert it by the conversion tables but yeah. the normal range is around uh, 460 to 520 no it's more around 530 to 550 less than that uh, that's what application is uh, basically designed for so uh, if it is higher or lower uh, it's always better to take an outer range of say around uh, 15 microns for 1 mm that's an approximate value there is no fixed number as such it it, it varies uh, so you just tell the patient that yeah you can take a, if the you don't just treat a patient based on intraocular pressure you'll also look at the disc you'll uh, also look at uh, other factors like their fields and their oct but you are uh, going to take you don't treat iop alone you treat yes. a patient Uh, as a complete iop is just one means of uh, that's the only treatable risk factor yes sir so uh, you you take an approximate 15 in uh, cct you are more worried about it in the present era like uh, you said in uh, post refractive surgeries uh, patients where uh, not everyone is going to be able to do a pascals it's not easy it's time consuming also it takes around five readings Uh, so in these patients one way you can also do is ask them to look temporal because you generally treat the central area so uh, that was actually my tc so you can ask the patient to look temporal and measure we measure tono pen with uh, uh, application uh, tonometer and we found that if you ask the patient to look temporally you can uh, it's similar to that of a, a tono pen Okay, but good. You've done a good uh, job of uh, compre- uh, having a good summary of all these methods. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Akka. 
Very nice presentation. I have no questions, but nicely done. Very nice presentation. Thank you. Ma